Mr. Rafael Marti. All right. Um, now that we're over the first hump, I hope everything else is going to go fine. Um, well, gonna, what I'm going to talk about to you in the next hour is, is something that you might have heard of before, inside of threat, something that is more and more of a topic in today's environment. What I'm going to try to do is I'm, I want to try to show you how you can actually take visualization and do uh, inside of threat detection. So before I start, I quickly want to tell you who I am so you know whether you can believe me or not. Um, I work at a company called Splunk, and I actually brought some t-shirts for you. So um, I still have the kit for the most intelligent question. Um, but for everyone else who asks questions, I have uh, a few shirts here. So um, ask me anytime during the presentation or in the end, just interrupt me if you have a question and you get a t-shirt, unless it's like a question I really don't like. Um, I don't like that question. You asked me what my name was. Sorry. Nice try, though. Um, so I work at a company called Splunk, um, and I just start started there a month ago. I worked for ArcSight before that. I will tell you in a second what Splunk is. I will actually show it during my presentation. Um, before that, I was at ArcSight, which is a SIM ESM company, it does log correlation, log analysis. Um, and this is basically the practical part of what Stefano before was talking about. And he said correlation doesn't work. Well, we could have some very interesting arguments. We should probably should have a panel or something. <laughs> um, before that, I did a lot of work. Oh, OK. <laughs> Um, I'm also active in the community. I'm on the Oval Board. And um, I founded together with MITRE a uh, effort to try to standardize event formats. If you're familiar with the space, there's a lot of problems that all these devices, they generate very, very different messages all over. There's no taxonomy. There's no common transport. So we're trying to pick up that problem again and once again um, try to standardize this, standardize this hopefully successful. Um, and as I'm here, there, I have a certain passion for visualization. And you see that I have a portal uh, that I maintain, secvis.org, which is really something for you guys to share information, to share ideas on how to visualize thing, things and discuss things. Why is visualization not working? Or what did you find to be working? All right. So what is the goal of my presentation here? Really, it's pretty simple. I want to detect insiders by using visualization. And the ag agenda looks as follows. I'm, uh, here we go. Too much animation, I guess. Um, I want to show you a very quick example in the beginning um, that just shows how visualization could be applied to a real world case. Um, I didn't fabricate the case. I fabricated the data to support the case. But um, you'll see that in a second. I want to then quickly talk about visualization in general. and. Um, give you some maybe food for thought of how to apply visualization, show how you can take data and visualize it. So the whole kind of pipeline from getting the data out of a product or a syslog or something and getting into a, it into a graph. And then I want to shift gears and, and show you or talk about inside of threat. A couple of slides about just theory. What is inside of threat really? What do I mean by that? And then I want to propose an inside of detection process. So something you can go along step by step to, um, to detect insiders. Um, if it was always as easy as just uh, looking at the people to know when there is an insider, that would be, would be nice. But unfortunately, it's not. So here, it's pretty clear that these are bad people. Um, normally, it's not. And there was a case in um, early 2007. Um, the company DuPont um, had a scientist, Gary Min, who was working for them. And he started downloading a lot of documents and intellectual property from their internal servers. He had legitimate access to that. But still, someone that downloads 22,000 scientific abstracts and 1,600 or 16,000 documents, um, I'm not sure if he can ever read that data. So they found that he wanted to sell this data to a competitor of DuPont. It was never caught. There's no evidence that he actually was able to successfully uh, sold them. But still, the, the loss would have been around 400 million if it actually happened. Now. Well, how could this have been prevented? And I guess this is the first question that a good answer gets assured. Come on. 
I know it's five o'clock, but still. What do you do? What's the talk about? How do you prevent this? Yes, visualization, t-shirt. What are you? What's your size? Big size. All right, I will have a double XL here for you. If you want to pass that back there. Um, exactly, or log collection, right? So you collect all the log files around this problem, and tr you try to find the problem in there. So I generated some data, and if they did some very primitive basic visualization, and here I just really use a bar chart. You can do this in Excel. Um, the only thing I did is I have all the user activity on the, on the y-axis, on the x-axis, and on the y-axis I have how many times or how many documents did this person look at. Very simple, the top bar just sticks out. There's something wrong. Why did this person access so many documents? Well, granted, you can say it's a little fabricated because you would have to, for every possible problem, you have to generate a graph like this. Well, okay, I agree with you. But if documents were one of my crown jewels, I would probably monitor them. And I would probably monitor these kinds of statistics. I could also do it a little more generic. What I could try to do is generate a link graph. A link graph is something that has nodes and edges connecting them, right? So in this case, what I did is I take the origin, uh, originator node as the user, and the other node is the server, the access. So I look, for example, at NetFlow data. I look at uh, maybe login data from my Windows event log or from syslog. Um, I can look at any kind of data that I have where I see users accessing servers. So if I visualize this, I will probably end up with something like this, um, where I have a lot of circles that are the users, I have the rectangles that are the servers, and the connections are who accesses what. I can see a lot of things in here. Um, I don't even want to go into the details, but what I did is I took the size of the circles to be the number of times I saw this user accessing a server. So very, very clearly, there's one node again in here that sticks out, and it's scary. So this is really just kind of a motivation for, for visualization of, of security data. So let me ask you a few more questions to get a little bit of a feeling for what you guys are doing. Um, who is looking at the log files? Oh my god. I count like eight hands in here. It's a little scary. Um, who is visualizing those logs? Three people. I have three shirts here. so. Please go and get one if you want one. Um, who's using Afterglow? Oh, you get a very special shirt. <laughs> um, I will show you what Afterglow is. Um, have you heard of secvis.org? A few. Well, now the other ones have heard of it too. Good. Um, any other tools you, look, you use for log analysis? Tenshi. Nice. Well, he's the author of Tenshi. He has to use it, right? <laughs> All right. Um, so let's step back and very quickly talk about visualization in general. Why would you use visualization? Um, why do I think it's something useful? Well, if you look at visual representations of data, you will always see things in there that you say, oh, I knew this. That's duh, right? I, why do you show, me, show this to me? Well, the interesting thing with visualization is also there will be questions that pop up that you didn't know about. You look at your data and you're like, what is this? And you find the answers to them mostly. The other thing is, it will increase your, your efficiency. Think about it. If you look at the log files, 10,000 lines, you have your 10G log, right? You can make a little bit of advertising for you. Um, you look at all those log files. Once you hit line number 50, you forgot what was in line number one. I can guarantee you that. And if you end up at 10,000, you forgot what all the rest was. So. With visualization, you have everything at one glance. You look at it, a certain property of your log file, and you can look at it in one picture and analyze it. It's also a great tool for communication. There's actually a gentleman here in the audience, I think, and his company um, used to send out emails from the security team to the operations team saying, hey, um, here's a problem with your machine. Here's the log file. Please remediate the problem. And they got the log back. The operations people were saying, what are you talking about? We have no idea what this means. So they started sending them graphs, saying, look, your machine connects to all these others. Apparently, there's something wrong with your machine. You're infected. And that helped a lot in communicating the problems. So it's a great way to communicate. And it also 
helps you making more informed decisions, right? If you, especially in the case of situational awareness, let's say you have a world map where you map your data onto the different countries where things are happening. So if you are a company operating worldwide, you might have operations in Europe and in the US. So if you see that in Europe there's a lot going on at the moment, and in the US it's quiet, you probably don't want to add any more services or, or more um, burden onto the European people, but you can probably deploy these things in the US first. So it just gives you kind of an, a situational awareness, a, a more, more insight into what, what's happening, uh, and you make better decisions through that. So now, why would you use visualization for insider threat? Well, the problem is, with insider threat data, or if you try to analyze these things, you will have way, way, way more data than doing your, your uh, traditional security use cases. Because with insider threat, you're not monitoring exceptions. You're not monitoring just the things that go wrong. You're monitoring everything. It's not, there's no device out there that tells you, hey, this guy over there is the insider. He did this and that. No. People using their legitimate access, they have access to all the, the IP, for example, the maybe patent filings. They have access to that. It's okay for them to access them. But as soon as they do something specific, they might take this patent filing and send it to the competitor. Well, now you have a case where something is not good anymore. But you need to monitor pretty much everything that happens. So huge amounts of data. And you need to handle them somehow. So again, you need tools to deal with that. And visualization is one of the approaches to take. Um, then you're going up the stack. Traditional security happens somewhere layer three and four. You look at IDSs and firewalls, maybe proxies in some cases. Maybe you start looking at your operating system log files. But if you get into, into inside a threat, you're starting to monitor transactions of applications. If you want to detect fraud, don't look in the network layer. You're not going to detect the fraud in there. You have to look on your financial applications and your trading systems, whatever. Huge amounts of data again. Um, and then a lot of times, you don't know these, these questions in advance. As I mentioned earlier, you might not even know what you're looking for. You have no idea. You're looking for some anomaly, right? And visualization often helps you find those. So how do you actually go about, or what's the process of getting data that you have into a graph? Well, it's pretty simple. On the left side here, you see a log file, anything, syslog, for example. And on the right side, you have to, the graphs you want. What you need to do is you need to parse your data, basically interpret the individual fields, right? Because when syslog comes in, when you look at that on your syslog server, it's basically just a string. I can't say I want to see everything that happened to this machine or from this machine to this machine. I need to take the event apart and say, oh, this is the source address and this is the destination address. There might be a username in there. So I need to parse it apart you can think of it as taking the syslog and trying to put it into a database that has all these different fields. You need to figure out what is what and what goes in what column in the database. And one thing I want to mention here, don't reinvent, reuse. In computer science, that's a great um, thing to do, right? You use libraries. So go out there, use parsers that people have written already. They thought about the problem. They used it already. You can find some of those on this really ugly URL on secris.org. If you just go to the home page, there's a, a section on parsers. So you can go there, contribute your own ones, and download, download the ones that are there. Now, on visualization, what you see a lot is the pie charts and bar charts and some of the dashboards of the products you might have. Well, they're all nice, and they might have their purposes. Maybe not pie charts, but everything else. Um, but there's something, there, there are more pseudographs out there to, to analyze uh, security data. And what I use a lot is link graphs. So link graphs, again, are these things that have nodes and edges connecting them. And I will talk a little bit more about them in a, in a second. The other thing are tree maps. And I find them really, really useful. On condensed space, you can visualize a lot of data. And I'm going to use them also uh, a little uh, later in the presentation. And then you have something called parallel coordinates. I'm not sure if you're familiar with those. Basically, what you do is you take the different fields of your event, the source address, the destination address, the destination port, and each of them is one of